<laughs> All right, so we have been learning about fractions and how fractions can be modeled. And we talked yesterday specifically at ways that you had learned to model fractions, some of the ways in third grade, some from iReady this year. Today we're looking specifically at how fractions are used in real life. How do we use fractions every single day? So before we get started on the problem, let's talk about some ways that you see fractions are used in either the lives of your parents or other adults you know, or, or ways that you use fractions every day. Who can give me an example of a way that fractions are used in, in everyday life? Annabelle? Okay, so we use it on number lines. And that's, you know, more so in our mathematics, we do see that. How else? In concrete, it could be like one full is red and three full is green. Okay, so that's construction. Um, Avery? Um, when you bake. Baking, cooking. I know I personally use fractions every single day when I cook for my family because recipes always call for a fractional part of something. Half of a cup of sugar, a quarter cup of butter, and you have to use those um, fractions. Emily? So like when you're in time, you know, like I, you have half an hour or something like that. Okay, so time when we're looking at parts of an hour, parts of a second, parts of a day. Clayton? When you're driving miles, like half a mile away. So I'm going to put distance because we use it a lot in distance measurements. Nevaeh? Uh, Okay, if you think of it again, and then share out. Rainy? Cutting like pies or pizza. Okay, so parts of food, specifically you use pies and pizza. That's that building? Building what? You have a specific building. one? So buildings? Okay, so we can use fractions in parts of a set, parts of a whole on those things. Aubrey? Um, like um, some work, like workers that work at the, um, like where they like make the bags and they put the rice in the bags or things they have to split up the bags and make sure they all have the same amount. Okay, so um, we're, we'll call those factory workers that create the products that we buy. They may have to split them. And we're going to come back to some more of your ideas. But we're looking specifically today at real life problems. So when we do our um, equivalent fractions, which is what we started yesterday, talking about the idea that fractions can be equal to each other even if they have different numbers, um, we're going to be putting it in the context of a real life problem. How would we use this in real life so that you can see how valuable understanding fractions can be um, just for what you do every day. So let, first, let's make sense of the problem. And of course, I've covered up the numbers so that my go-getters don't start solving the problem before we've talked about it. On Monday, Coach Owens ran some fraction of a mile. On Wednesday, she ran some fraction of a mile. And on Friday, she ran some fraction of a mile. Does that sound like Coach Owens? Yeah. She likes to run. On which days did Coach run the same amount? So let's make sense of the problem. What is this problem about? Isaiah. Miles. It's talking about miles. What else does the problem tell us? Rainy? It's, um, how much we run. All, I mean, how he's comparing certain days. So we're comparing how much she ran certain days. Trace? Who is the fraction of equivalent? How do you know that? Because it says, on which days did Coach Owens run the same amount? So we know that, since we know these are fractions, I did tell you that these are fractions, that we've got to have at least two that are the same to be able to answer this question. So that kind of gives you a clue right there that we're looking for equivalent fractions. What information is going to be important in solving this problem? Aiden? How many miles she there? So the, how, many, or how many miles she ran or how many, what fraction of the miles she ran? Uh, how many miles she ran is, how many days 
สอบเพิ่งเอ็มเอ็ม So it's important that we know the fraction that I'm covering up, isn't it? Because you can't start comparing until you actually see them. So it is. It talks about the miles, but we're talking about part of a mile. She didn't run a whole mile on these days. She ran part of a mile. We got to see what time, in which two days did she run the same distance? All right. You're going to use whatever strategy you're comfortable with. But as always, I challenge you that after you solved it with your strategy. Prove it with a different model. Pick either by mathematically using numbers to prove it, or using a different model than the first one to prove that your initial answer is correct. Here are your numbers. On Monday, Coach Owens ran two thirds of a mile. On Wednesday, she ran four fifths of a mile. On Friday, she ran four sixths of a mile. On which days did Coach run the same amount? And soft.
moment for you to share your thinking with a partner. Remember, use your sentence start starters. Let me know the strategy you're using, or if you aren't sure yet how to solve it, admit that to your partner. I'm not really sure where to begin, and see if you can do some coaching of each other. All right, so turn and talk. at what's not shaded, and they're almost the same mm -hmm. here. 
Um, but I'm glad you caught that a mathematically 4 6 sounds like it has a relationship of two thirds. So even though your circle model isn't quite <coughs> accurate, by checking the math and using a different model, you were able to still come to the correct answer um, by using a different method. Very important lesson to learn from Ramey is that sometimes we're not really accurate in our drawings, and that's why it's so important to check yourself with another method. Um, that especially when you know you're not a really accurate accurate artist in your drawing, so that you can make sure your math that your answer is mathematically sound. Thank you for sharing, Avery. <clears throat> Come and share the strategy that you use. I like how I see Emily is so attentive to her classmates as they share. Remember, body language always makes the presenter feel more comfortable. Right. How did you determine the answer? I used the number line. So first, I drew my number and I colored in the spaces so it was the fraction and then I did it four six and I saw that they were equal so I knew that they were the same. So her number line is a little bigger than Ramey's. It still demonstrates the same conceptual understanding, but I, I felt like we could see hers a little bit better. Um, in that, here are the two thirds, and notice again how Avery was focused. It's not the tick mark here that we're focused on; is the space between the lines that demonstrates that measurement. Two thirds here, then this one divided into six, and the two thirds and the four six line up. I also want you to notice that her holes, her lines, are the same exact length. We always need to work with the same size hole when we're comparing. That would probably be the error I see most commonly occurring for those of you that did not get the same response as these three um, young people, is that you didn't start with the same size model. Your rectangles or circles are different sizes, and so it ended up messing you up on solving the problem. So be careful to make sure your holes are the same size when you use them. Excellent job. Thank you for sharing, Avery. So let's look at a way that I solved it before we go on to some connecting questions. Um, the answer to the question isn't necessarily saying two-thirds equals four-sixths. So we do have to be careful in word problems not to assume that the numbers we use to answer the question are the final answer. In this case, it asks on which days did she run the same amount. So if you were going to answer that question, hopefully you would include she ran the same amount on Monday and Friday because two-thirds is equivalent to four-sixths. Your numbers were the way you proved which days, but your answer would need to include the names of the days to actually be an accurate answer. I used a similar method to what some of you did. I used the one we did yesterday, where we started with the first fraction, the two-thirds, and then because we know that six is twice as many pieces as three-thirds, uh, we divide each piece in half to give twice as many pieces and then count it up to get the four six. Also proving it mathematically by multiplying it by two over two since we doubled the number of pieces. We have twice as many pieces both in the denominator and twice as many pieces in the numerator to prove it with the math. So we've done all this learning. So I have a couple of burning questions that I feel like we've got to address before I give you uh, the word problems of the day. The first one is, Back to our essential question for today. What strategies can you use to determine if fractions are equivalent? So before I have you share, I'd like you first to turn and talk to your partner and share. Name the strategy that you um, think would be most effective in determining if two or more fractions are equivalent to one another. So turn and talk. I'm not sure 
next number. And I don't like the butterflies. Alright, who would like to share? what their partner said. Kyla. Um, my partner Clayton said that, that um, the faction bar would be um, easier to use. Okay, and that's the method he actually used in his demonstration, so for him the fraction bar is a strategy that's effective. Nadea, what's your partner say? My partner said that a partner said it would be easier to use. Which one? Part of a set. Okay, so he likes that specific strategy. doing the mathematical thinking of what's the relationship between the numbers. Are we multiplying by the same numerator and denominator to get to that next fraction? And then checking it with the model afterwards. All right. Anyone else would like to tell me what your partner said would be a good strategy for determining if fractions are equivalent? <coughs> okay, so your partner said the bar model. So your partner said using a, a square or a fraction bar type model. I, I heard this group, and I know Kaylee is very shy, so she's not going to want to say that, but she asked about the butterfly method. Thumbs up if you have been exposed to the butterfly method in third grade by your third grade teacher. Okay. So as I've shared with you, the butterfly method is a strategy that is an effective strategy for checking your answer. However, a butterfly strategy doesn't necessarily prove the mathematics or the concept behind it. So I don't mind you using it as a good checking tool. But what I'd like to see are the use of models or the use of mathematics to show me and demonstrate your understanding first and then that butterfly method as a way to check it after you've demonstrated you've understood it. The big thing we have to remember in, in fourth grade is that if we don't understand the concepts behind the math and why it works, then those tricks at some point stop working. So when we get into other things, like when you need to generate equivalent fractions to find the common denominator, is the butterfly method going to help you? No. So I'm always thinking ahead of, okay, this is what they have to learn in fifth grade, and here's what they need to learn in sixth grade. So we've got to make sure that you're learning the concepts well enough that you can build on them. And those other strategies, like the butterfly method, that are just ways to check, you can't build off of that because it doesn't apply to other things that you're going to learn with fractions. So just keep that in mind. Second question, and this one's really deep. All right, are you ready to make your brains really grow? Yes. Okay, it's going to happen on this one. You have to think hard, dig deep for this answer. When you multiply any number by one, the product is equivalent to the other factor. I know that was a lot of math language. So the basic example of that, six times one equals six. If I multiply six times one, I'm going to get the equivalent amount of six, which is still six. I could do that with 32 times one is 32, or 100 times one is 100. Anytime you multiply by one, your product is equivalent or equal to the factor you started with before you multiplied by one. It's an equal amount. Why does multiplying the fraction below by two halves create an equal amount or equivalent fraction to two thirds? We know why it works in whole numbers. Why does it work? in fractions to multiply by the same numerator and denominator and still get an equivalent fraction, an equal amount to what we started with. Think on that for a minute. This is one of those, let's take a little bit of time.
Kylie just brought up a good question. Is it only because that's an even number? So let's demonstrate and see if this is just a, it only works with two halves. What if I do two thirds times three thirds equals six ninths? Is that true? Is six ninths yes. equivalent to two thirds? Yes. Prove it. Yes, because. Prove it on your board. I want to see it. Prove it. I need to know that the math works this way so I can trust it. So you've got to prove it to me. and show us your area model just with the fraction bars. I know I'm calling you up before you're quite done with your um, number line. But let's look at this. I watched Kyla do this. She first shaded in, she divided this into thirds and then shaded two of them, which is the number we started with. Then what did you do, Kyla? to make it into where it's nine equal pieces, which is the denominator here. And how many of those pieces are shaded? Six. Six. So did she just prove it? Mm -hmm. Alright, so I know this math works. Why? Thank you, Paula. I'm going to always get an equivalent fraction. Why does that work? We said if we multiply any number by one, the product is equivalent to the original factor. make some connection here. Thinking about what I've circled. <coughs> Emily? So three-thirds is one whole, but two-thirds, that's 
two-thirds. So I'm proving here that if I'm multiplying by something that's equal to one, I'm going to have the same amount when I'm done. Correct? Oh, I, yeah, I get it. Is this equal to one? Yes. Yes. Is this still the same amount, yes. but just smaller pieces? Uh -huh. So anytime I multiply by a number that has the same numerator and denominator, it's the same thing as if I'm multiplying by one. So I'm going to have something that's equal to what I started with, all I've done is I've made the pieces smaller, but I didn't change how much I have. The amount I started with is still the same amount. The pieces are smaller, so I knew it looks like I have more of them, but they're still the same. All right, you're going to practice this in your partner posters today. We're doing mini posters because I want to be able to use more um, to be able to set up outside the classroom. And you're going to work with shoulder partners um, today just for the sake of time that you have time to get this um, completed. In the, on the form, what is automatically expected of you is that you will create a visual model to demonstrate your thinking. That visual model can be any of the accepted models that we have learned um, or that you learned in third grade. You will write an equation that supports your model that includes uh, what equivalent, fraction equivalent to one you used to demonstrate your thinking. You'll write the final answer to the question. Remember in some of them, the answer to the question, just like the Coach Owen's question, was not the fraction. It was asking for days of the week. So you might have to do an extra step to answer the question. You're going to explain the steps you took to solve the problem. You and your partner need to come to consensus on that and check your work. Now, as usual, I have some students in here who want to go above and beyond. You want to be the poster child that gets your poster on the outside of the building on the wall. So, what are some additional things that we would do on our poster if we want to be hallway worthy? Isaiah. Um, don't mess around. Well, that's your behavior, but I, you want it to be neat. So, if you think that you need to do some figuring first, do it on your whiteboard and don't write it on the paper until you know you're ready. You may want to add some color. I do recommend, because we're not using this kind of paper this time, that you use the color pencils and I've already put them out for you. Kaylee? Write in pencil first. Write in pencil first. That adds to the neatness. What else am I going to be looking for that will make your poster stand out above everyone else's? What do you think, Emily? Well... Not neatness, but mostly everyone working together. Everyone contributes. I shouldn't just see one person's handwriting who did all of the work.